So Galactic HF is an 8,256 patient trial that was designed to answer the question of, can we, by improving cardiac function, directly improving cardiac function, can we improve outcomes in our patients with heart failure? It was designed to roll two kinds of patients. One group, about a quarter of the patients, actually 25% of the patients, were enrolled in the hospital during a heart um, hospitalization for heart failure after their initial treatment. So this provides the opportunity for us to see direct real life experience of how patients do when they're started right away on the therapy. Then the second group is the more traditional um, chronic heart failure study where patients were enrolled any time within one year of discharge from a hospital or an emergency room visit for heart failure. We had um, about 100 plus sites globally and there were two main treatment groups. There was the omecamptive treatment group where we used up titration of the dose with through a pharmacokinetic based titration. And the second group was the placebo group. Um, and we've been following these patients um, for, for many years now. The thing that was important that you alluded to um, is that at this recent kind of virtual ACC 2020 um, meeting, we were able to present the baseline characteristics from Galactic HF. And we were very excited to see that what we had planned and worked so hard to achieve, actually we, we were able to achieve in the, in the enrollment at least of the patients. The types of patients we were enrolling, we were able to get 25% of the patients from the inpatient setting. These are patients who have a wide range uh, of heart failure, but predominantly, um, compared to most trials, a little higher percentage of class three and class four heart failure patients. And because our cutoff for the ejection fraction was, was 35% or less, we had a little lower ejection fraction than some of the studies, a 27%-ish ejection fraction. Um, interestingly, the other importance was we were able to have, because we used a much lower um, entry criteria for the estimated glomerular filtration rate, we were allowed, allowed patients who had an EGFR um, above 20 into the trial, which is, is much because this uh, agent has no adverse effects on renal function to date, um, we were able to be very liberal in that regard. In the same way, we allowed patients with low blood pressures into the trial. Patients with blood pressures above 85 were allowed into the trial. Um, because of the absence of effect on these things. Um, so, so we were able to get those broad range of patients. They had the usual kind of broad range of, of comorbidities. But in addition, one of the things we were particularly proud of is these patients are extraordinarily well cared for in terms of their baseline treatment. 87% um, of the patients were on an ACE inhibitor, an ARB, or an ARNI. And in fact, um, almost 20% uh, of the patients were on an ARNI in this trial um, to start with. And that percentage increased dramatically during the trial as well. So we will have, we will be able to answer the question of, well, how do these patients do in the context of contemporary therapy, even though we started the trial before the ARNIs were, were officially part of the guidelines? In addition, 94% um, of the patients were on beta blockers. And 77% of the patients in the trial were on mineralocorticoid receptor antagonists, which to my knowledge is one of the highest rates of MRAs in, in any of the um, contemporary trials, other than the trials that directly studied MRAs. Um, so we are very pleased with the background therapy. Um, we think we have a broad range of, of patients in this regard, and we'll be able to um, see patients who were you know, enrolled right after their or during a heart failure hospitalization up to patients a year out from their heart failure hospitalization. So that, those were the main data that were presented um, at the ACC. Well, you know, since 1895, um, when, when they first isolated uh, um, adrenaline or epinephrine, physicians and, and care providers have been trying to find agents that improve cardiac function. Because if you look at the and all of these systems that describe the, the pathogenesis of heart failure. The top line that is usually ignored is the initial decrease in LV function. And so 
what Omicampton McCarble does is it directly addresses the fundamental defect in heart failure with reduced ejection fraction. So this provides the opportunity, much as, as we believe that neurohormonal antagonists do, but actually in a more direct manner, Omicampton McCarble has the potential to actually prevent the development of heart failure, um, to prevent the progression of heart failure. So Galactic HF is geared towards showing that it can treat established heart failure. And I think if, it, if the Galactic HF is positive, given its absence of effects on heart rate, blood pressure, renal function, or potassium, the Omicampton McCarble could be potentially started at any time in the patient's clinical course and without interfering in the titration or the um, administration of any of the other guideline-directed therapies. So it provides a, a potential grand, with, this, this, with the caveat that the trial has to be positive, um, but within that context, it relieves in some ways the uh, providers of, of this onus of trying to balance um, how many millimeters of mercury are they going to spend of the patient's blood pressure on the beta blocker versus the ARNI? Um, you know, how are they going to balance these things? With the Omicampton McCarble, that doesn't come into that equation. So, so I think that's a real benefit. And we hope that it will demonstrate an improvement in cardiovascular death, an improvement in heart failure hospitalizations, as well as an improvement in the KCCQ, the, the health-related outcomes measure, so quality of life measure. So that's our hope. Um, and I think it's not an unrealistic one. I mean, we've all been, been in this for a while, but... Um, I think uh, given the preclinical data and the, the early clinical data that, you know, as I said, we have over a thousand patients <laughs> who have been in the, in the early clinical program. So this program has more clinical experience than most other development programs.